Hi, welcome to the Lost Birds Knitting Podcast. I am Allison, also known as Lost Birds on Ravelry, and on Instagram, I am Lost Birds Fiber. Hello, my name is Danielle. I am also known as Bright D on Ravelry and Lady D Bright on Instagram. And follow me if you wish to follow me. Me as well, although I do screen um, Instagrammers. Because sometimes you get some very strange people following you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. Today is Sunday, uh, December 14th, we decided. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> there was a decision involved. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and we greatly apologize that we uh, took uh, an un- unexpected leave of absence. Yes. Um, it was qu- it's been quite a long break. We missed you guys. <laughs> yes, exactly. Actually, we recorded. Did we? We recorded right like the week before. Thanks- we recorded right before Thanksgiving. Right. Um, but that episode is just getting, getting uploaded. Yep. <laughs> to four, three weeks later. <laughs> We've both My been bad. fairly <laughs> fairly busy. Yeah, so. Um, anyway, we apologize and thank you for whoever's stuck Still with fun, us. Yeah, yeah. Hanging out. I'm sure we lost a few of you. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's get into our knitting. So, what are you working on? So, I am currently working on um, a pair of Halloween socks. Speaking <laughs> of late, yeah, uh, we're behind in everything, right? Okay. Anyways, um, so but I did get um. This is not the first one, so I did get the second one done. Hurrah! And oh, nice. so, here's that one. Um, um, as I was telling Allison before we um, recorded, I had some ample time with an ATM tech this last week, so I was able to um, uh, work. Actually, I finished up the toe um, on well on site and. Um, started the other one. That is one of my favorite, like, um, you know, stitch patterns or whatever, Mm -hmm. this kind of, like, wide rib. Mm -hmm. One of my first pairs of, uh, that goes, it goes all the way down the, um, top of the foot and up the leg. Um, I don't know if you're following a pattern, but. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. Yeah. It's just, um, it's a, uh, five by a two rib. Uh, the rib um, isn't every other row rib, so uh, you have uh, row one, knit, row two, knit five, purl two, knit five, purl two. So it's just a... I see. Well, but you're a recipe? Just, yeah, you're just com- coming up with it. Yeah. But one of the first pairs of socks I ever knit was that, and it's still one of my favorites. It's like, I don't know, it's just really comfortable. It just fits your foot really well. Anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, so what else? I am making uh, a, some Christmas presents that I hope hope everybody is is going to like. So I have um, soap from the Simple Soap Company, um, and a bunch of different scents and that sort of stuff. Um, I've been part of their three bars a month club uh, for this is my fourth month. Um, so I have six bars of soap um, that are going to my team members, and with that um, is going to be a washcloth. So I have a wash one of the washcloths here. Um, I have uh, two more at home, so three total, and I have six team members. I'm hoping just to we'll see how how far I get. Um, obviously, I want one washcloth with every team member but if I make two then added bonus I get like super brownie points from in my book I need to keep track of my own points <laughs> but anyways so I'm just gonna put them in a little basket with the bar of soap and maybe uh, the washcloth with a little ro- uh, bow around it very cute so there's that and I've been working on my fall socks <laughs> so late all the time <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so I, I've, you've seen this one before, 
the the finished one. So I technically have a finished pair now. They just don't match. They but. don't. <laughs> well, no, like if, if you. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Anyways, the one-offs right now. Gotcha. Poor guys. And so I've I've done uh, a couple of re- repeats on this guy. Um, specifically, while I was making pancakes this morning. You were so, making pancakes and knitting socks at the same time? Yeah, I mean, this was just on my pants. and <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could pull that off, but I think it's because I'm a messy pancake maker, so. Well, you also have little hands to help. Yes, I do. That's and true. then, um, for me, like, I I have um, uh, a griddle type thing. Mm-hmm. So I can do four of them at a time. And then... Um, on the other side, I can do the bacon or sausage or whatever else. Um, yes, my family is a, a carnivores. Anyways, or ob- omnivores. Anyways, um, we eat meat. The, but so it's very easy just to have both things going. It's both right here. I can see everything and just go. So I'm doing that. I'm not putting things away correctly, and. So I needed a little bit of a break from knitting um, from our craft show. We'll talk about our craft show in a little bit. Yeah. And so I got this from Miss Allison at our craft show. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have your your uh, insert in oh, here. Oh, that's um, okay. But it's just uh, some, some wool. We have some red and some off-white gray. Where'd that go? And I, I, unfortunately, that lovely spindle that I showed you guys that I got from Seven Yaks on Etsy. Um, it had like an, a clear acrylic um, so, cut out. Right. Um, the butterfly whirl. And um, completely snapped in half. Um, and I was very, very sad. Um, so I, I couldn't find a way that I could fix it and not have like the the fiber hang on to it when it was spinning like if I decided to because it's right down the middle of it and so if I decided to super glue it I was afraid that the fiber fiber would just stick to the super glue all the time because super glue stays tacky sometimes it does, yeah and humidity super glue can kind of become tacky again and it's very humid here so yeah so I got a whirl from Miss Allison, and, or a spindle from Miss Allison, and I've just been spinning away and enjoying it immensely. And also something that I had with me last Saturday when I was hanging out with the ATM techs. Um, you were spinning? Yeah, I was spinning. Oh my gosh, they must have found that pretty interesting. Well, like, um, there's three ATM techs, and they, we... We have no idea what their names are, unfortunately, because uh, they they don't really tell us. Interesting. And I don't think they know our names, unless, of course, they read our name tags. Um, but the uh, the oldest one, the middle one, and the youngest one. So the youngest one was working with me last Saturday, and he was while we were waiting for the ATM to reboot and everything like that. And, it was just kind of like looking at me like I was coming from Mars. Like, you know, <laughs> like I'm like it's okay, it's okay. So are these are these guys Japanese or yeah, they so are. they don't speak much English, right? Or, so exactly. you guys are just kind of standing there in awkward silence. A lot. Yeah, <laughs> except for the youngest one who's looking at me like I'm from Mars. Um, is I I introduced him to American Roller Derby, and. <laughs> He thought it was the most amazing thing ever that, you know, like, yes, there is a roller derby for guys out there, but it's not as popular as, as the, the female one. Um, there's a lot less leagues and that sort of stuff. So I was telling him that the leagues out here are only female, you know, only female. And he goes, only female. (laughs) So I'm like, yes, <laughs> you know, like, um, he was, he thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, 
I'm not gonna, you know, tell you what you like and what you don't like, you know? Okay. So, yeah, there's that. So, I have... So, yes, it has been a while since we've podcast, so we have lots of things to show. Um, so we did have the craft fair, and, um, so I was able to finish a few more objects before that. So I have another baby vertebrae. I showed this one, right? Did I show this one? I don't think I showed this one. Anyways, I don't, I think you showed one that was, it was all red. All red, mm. or it wasn't finished yet. Yeah, this, uh, this one I think I finished the Friday before. But, um, so yeah, I have this little Santa Claus guy. Um. I thought I had the other things with me, but maybe I don't. But, um, no, I put it, I left it in this box. But this also has, um, a hat, uh, and, um, booties that match this. Um, because I know I had those done. Because I was like, I am done with the red color for a little while. <laughs> um, so I had to put that on pause. Um, so how I had these packaged, is this the, the full red one? Yes. Oh, I this is saw the packaging. This is the the full red one, and so I had these or had these packaged like this um, in the well I had them laying out but um, they were going to be packaged like this if should somebody uh, purchase one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> side note, anyways, um, so there's the booties there, the hat, and then the sweater up here. So you've seen that one the color before. I have yet to to finish the sweater that goes with these because um, after the as I was telling you after the the craft fair I was like nope no more knitting for like two days three days so it just put it on pause for a little bit so here is the very very baby pink hat and the little booties to go with it and, and you had a baby blue one. Oh, you yep. have it sorry yeah <laughs> it's right here um, so here's the, the baby blue one of the package set. And I figure I'd just leave them in their boxes, cut the tags off, and give them as gifts. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the thing about baby knits is like... They're always going to be good. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, you can always find someone to gift them to. Alright. But I will show you then the little pink baby sweater. I was actually working on this for most of the day when we were um, on, at the craft fair. And so I have almost, it almost done. So I've already picked up the, the ribbing for the, the front of it. Um, I have majority of the sleeve done here. And then I just have to do the other sleeve here. So it's almost done. But at the same time, like, Pink is my least favorite color, so I'm like, mm, it's okay, it can, it can hang out for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but I do want my needles, so there's that. Yeah. <laughs> Good motivation. Exactly. And then, last but not least, um, mm. I've been working on um, some spinning. This is um, the braid that I've been showing you, so this is the, the first half of it. That's um, that fireball one? Fireball. Oh. Um, Fireball uh, by uh, Spun Right Round, and um, it's it came up to be. Where did it go? There it is. It came up to be uh, as a single, just about a lace weight. So the two go the two plied is going to be roughly around a sport. If I have done my math correctly. Yeah, and you can kind of test it by, like, taking out a strand and letting it twist on itself. You can kind of tell what it will look like plied mm -hmm. on itself. Um, that's true. That's true. Yeah, those colors are beautiful. My they're a lot more heathered than I expected, but they're, yeah. they're really nice. And I say, it, it reminds me of, like, um, do you remember ribbon candy? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Huh. But, um, so yeah, I've been working, I have the second half of this already on the wheel, um, but here is the first. But yeah. So there is that. I like that. I'm 
I'm pretty excited about that. I'm, I was thinking, I'm like, uh, do I want to, because it's un gonna end up coming out like a gradient. What did you say that was? What fiber? Um, it's the panda blend. So. Oh, okay. So bamboo merino. Oh, yeah. Silk. Exactly. Yep. Okay. And um, so I'm thinking for this one, I might try just like a very simple shawl and see how it comes. Out. Yeah. Definitely. That's really pretty. So yeah, that's it for my knitting. Okay. Um, uh oh. She doesn't like this the yarn like touching her. Yeah, like if I have a little string <laughs> it, it starts moving and she feels it. <laughs> I, her fur is like jumping. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually she'll jump off my lap. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, I'll keep the string off. <laughs> um oh, anyway. Poor Luna. I know. I'm still working on these socks. I actually have, my knitting has, um, taken the back seat recently because of lots of other things going on, but I mean, you know, I've gotten pretty far on these, so I'm almost to the cuff. Well, maybe not actually, now that I look at it, but anyway, still working on these socks, same ones you guys have seen for a while. Um, and then... Yeah, so we will talk about the the craft fair, but um, one of the things that I have been working on, or that I will be working on more as well, are these ornaments. I don't think I ever showed the finished product. Yeah, finished ornament, what they look like. But it's a piece of sea glass. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Now we just have to cord it. <laughs> um, anyway, and it's probably not going to focus on it, but it's, um, there we go. Um, it's a piece of sea glass. I soldered around it, and then it has this metal stamped tag um, that says Okinawa 2014, and then the, I added some beads, and um, the, yeah. the hangers are an, it's an Okinawan print fabric. This is, um... I think, is this the Bingada kind of, is that what they call it? Bingada? Oh, I have no clue. I'm dying. So well, anyway, it's kind of like a batik um, style of fabric. So anyway, this is the one that I made and kept, but um, because I sold all of the other ones, which I'll talk more about as well. <clears throat> really all of them? Yes. Oh, wow. So, and now I'm making more, in fact. I'll talk about it. Okay. <laughs> but, um, let's see. I'm just going to show these because, um, I also made these for the craft fair. They're just, they're, um, there's regular wooden knitting needles, however you put. Yeah, they're embellished, they're just embellished, um, bamboo knitting needles, but they're, they were fun to make and they're kind of pretty and... Mm -hmm. Um, so, I also have some spinning that I've done. So, what I've been trying to practice is core, coreless core spinning. I think I talked about this a little bit in the last episode, but it's basically the look of a core spun yarn, except, um, there's no core. It's just a technique of... It's, it's kind of wrapping the yarn around itself. Um, Jazz Turtle, who is Esther Rogers, um, she has a YouTube video um, demonstrating it. And then if you go to Plucky Fluff, um, oh my gosh, I just, like, my brain just... Lexi Boger, sorry, I almost forgot her name. Um, if you go to Lexi Boger's site, pluckyfluff.com, um, she has a free video called Coil Boil, and then she goes over this technique as well in her, I think she might be the one who sort of pioneered it. Yeah. I could be wrong, but anyway, 
Um, you can find you can find demonstrations online for coreless core spinning, and it's it's a really cool technique, and you can do a lot with it. But I'm just practicing because. I'm not very good at core spinning to begin with, and then, but I like the idea of not actually having to use a core, <laughs> because even though with a core, I think you would get more yardage with your fiber, um, it's also a lot more work, because if you don't, um, if you don't, like, if you don't spin your core first, I think... If you don't spin your core first, and I think you add extra twist to the core so that when you spin it in the opposite direction, it balances out, mm -hmm. you'll end up with the, the core wants to twist more. So if you start with an already balanced core, you're adding more twist, you're going to end up with like a really overspun core spun yarn most of the time. There is another technique um, I haven't tried um, where you wrap your core around a spindle a drop spindle and you kind of let it unwind as you're spinning um, so it's the extra twist isn't building up because it's hang it, the spindles hanging and letting that twist out oh that's interesting yeah I like I said I haven't tried it but um, it's another option but this this way you don't have to use a core at all and I think it's a little bit easier to ends up with a more balanced yarn, even though maybe not, because this is basically a single ply, and single plies are never going to be 100% balanced, but mm. anyway, that's another thing. This is the, f this is part of the fiber that I'm using. It's just, um, it's a bat I carded. It's a crazy textured bat. It's got n silk noil, and uh, I never know if I'm saying that right, noil. It's got soy silk, it's got uh, Firestar, a little bit of Angelina, Merino, it's got all kinds of stuff. I think there's some Polworth in there. Um, so I think the yarn's really beautiful. I love the look of coarse spun yarns, but they are kind of difficult for me still to spin. I would say I haven't even attempted it. Yeah. It's fun. I don't know, it's fun. It's... It's hard to get a, a balanced yarn for me. That's that's the only hard part about it is not overspinning it. So there's that. Um, let me see. Do I have any other projects? Oh, um, well, I had some. I've been carding actually a lot of wool. I dyed a bunch of wool, and then I've been carding it up. And I've added some new things to my shop, so I've been taking photographs of all of it, and the whole, all of that stuff is very time-consuming, so um, that's why my knitting has kind of taken a backseat mm -hmm. lately. I've been doing a lot of other projects, and um, I did, before... Before I really got into all that, I did finish... Um, a couple Christmas gifts, so I spun, um, I spun four ounces of, uh, Merino Tencel that I had, did I, I think I showed that, it was the Bee Eater colorway, mm -hmm. I finished that, I don't know if I, um, I don't think I showed the finisher, and I just showed it on the bobbin, but I finished it, it was a gift, um, for, um, it was a gift for someone, and I also finished, uh, a pair of mittens um, for my brother. They were they were out of real chunky, um, bulky yarn. I think it was a commercial yarn, but it had like a very hand spun look to it, and it was gifted to me, so I don't actually even know what it was. But it was neutral colors. It was kind of manly, so <laughs> I thought, and it was big and chunky, so it was good for a gift, a last minute gift. Um, and I ended up making these uh, flip top. Ma I'll look up the pattern and link it in the show notes. But um, they were the they're man mitts. Is that what they're, they're called? Like, like man, man mitts, okay. yeah. And um, the designer had designed them for her husband, who like had very specific um, 
requirements. For yeah, pets. for his for this pair of like work gloves, and they were also I thought they were also pretty perfect for my brother, who he's he actually um he works on the film crew that films Grimm. It's a TV show. I don't actually. I've seen like an episode or two, but we don't get TV over here really. I think it's on Hulu. Oh, yeah, we don't we don't have Hulu, we don't have Netflix, we don't have our we the only thing we have is an Apple TV and we basically rent movies on it. Um we don't watch a lot of shows, but anyway, uh so he works on this film crew. Sometimes they end up filming in outside or, like, in crazy conditions, so I thought it'd be good to have a pair of mittens that he could, like, you know, flip the top off, and they were versatile. He could still use his fingers, but he could keep his hands warm in between, so we'll see. <laughs> um, so I'm done with all my Christmas knitting. I got it mailed off. Packages already arrived, I think, so awesome. right, on, right on schedule. Um, I haven't even started my Christmas Uh-oh. <laughs> I still have Halloween socks. I know. <laughs> uh, I know. I know. It's been busy these last few weeks. It's the holiday season, you know, so. Anyway, those are all my projects, really, for okay. for the moment. So, did you go off course at all? Okay, so I don't know what is wrong with my brain. Um... <laughs> With these little baby items, because, uh, just, uh, I'm not gonna give away the secret sauce, but pretty much any time that you are doing ribbing, you're gonna be in a smaller needle size than the body of yeah, something. Yeah, when it's on the edge of something. Right, yeah. so, like, that. So it says suck it in to hold it on to your socks, body. The socks, you know? Yeah. I don't know what is wrong with my brain, but I'm I'm just gonna cruise along and just keep on going. Well, crap. you're in a you're on a roll. That's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I've done that like five or six times. <laughs> You'll learn one of these <laughs> times. <laughs> and, and so like I realized, you know, two rows after, and I rip it back, rip it back, and you know, change the needles out, and then do it again, and yeah. just like. Ah, why won't I get this in my brain? <laughs> uh, so, and then um, my other off course was, um, as I was telling you, I was I finished the sock um, uh, on site, uh, so I didn't have um, my purse with me. I can't I can't really have any um, thing that you can possibly stick money into with me when you're at an ATM site. Um, so I just had the ball of yarn and the sock. That's all I had. <laughs> you, I don't and, know. <laughs> you could stick some money in, down in that sock. Uh, I would say really truthfully, I am know. making a, a, a tube, right? Anyways, um, <laughs> but I'm going to say that that's, that's all I can have with me is, you know, like a lot of people just bring with their phone or whatever mm -hmm. else. And, uh, yeah, I had my phone with me, but, you know, I, um, I just have a, a regular iPhone and um, eats through batteries like it's gone out of style. And so I'm not going to stay on my phone for several hours and then not have somebody, some way to contact somebody. So, sock. Anyways, I was trying to do the Kitchener stitch on the, the end of this toe mm -hmm. with a paper clip and a rubber band. <laughs> that is like true MacGyver knitting right there. That's the name of this, that is the name of this episode, by the way. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so I undid the, the paper clip and kind of had the end of it into like this kind of hook thing. Oh and my then, gosh. And then so I, you can't like have the yarn, I learned this, but you can't thread the yarn through this little hook thing and it's, expect it to go through you know, what you have in your needles. So I had a rubber band and connected the rubber band to the... <laughs> I connected oh it to the gosh. paper. Oh my gosh. 
you, and that worked just fine. Oh my uh, gosh, you must have had so much time on your hands to like devise this little scheme of yours. It only took like 15 minutes. Oh, that's so funny. Wow. But yeah, I was able... Good for you, though. <laughs> I was able to complete my sock with a paperclip and a rubber band. I'm, and it doesn't I'm look, impressed. It doesn't look too bad, does it? it? There's like one little mistake right there, but, you know, it doesn't look too bad. I'm impressed. I wouldn't know that you did that with a paperclip. <laughs> nope. Okay, so <laughs> forgive my... Uh, I guess office supplies. I don't driver. think that's off course. I think that's like... <laughs> I don't know what I would categorize that as. Maybe we need to come up with a new <laughs> knitting brilliance. Yeah, a new segment. <laughs> knitting genius. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know if I'd call That's... it brilliance. It's more like desperation. <laughs> I too. need to get this off, and then you know, so I can just cast something else oh, on. That's funny. Wow. Good job. <laughs> My off course is only the course spinning thing. I, first of all, I couldn't decide really when I started that yarn. I couldn't decide if I was going to just do a single ply or if I was going to ply it with something else. And I, I finally settled fairly early on. I finally settled on Carla's <coughs> course spinning. But in the meantime, I think the first like little bit of my bobbin is just all different kinds of it's going to be all different uh, kinds of twist and types of yarn, so, but that's okay. It was sort of, it was sort of an experimental bat. It was a bat to play around with an experiment with and practice with anyway, so. There you go. Anyway, but my, that's not nearly as interesting as <laughs> you see a paper clip <laughs> and a rubber band to Kitchener stitch your socks closed. <laughs> so... That we'll we'll just move on. We'll leave it at we'll leave it at that. <laughs> no, I'm kind of embarrassed about it. Yeah. No, hey, I would be proud of that. I'm I think it's brilliant personally. I don't know about you guys. But anyways. That um, is awesome. Yeah, so how was your week? Yeah, we're into our bird's eye view, our overview of the week, which is actually so, three, like, three weeks, weeks at this point. Sorry. So, yeah, like, we haven't even talked about Thanksgiving, but, you know, it's so long ago now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have gone past that point. We're past that. You guys don't care anymore, I'm sure. Christmas. So, Christmas. Yes, it's all about Christmas. And let's see, this week I... Week? This week? This I have... This time period? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um. Well, we did our... We did our... Hello, Luna. We did our craft show... On the 6th. Yes, on the 6th of December was our craft show. So leading up to that, I was just like crazy busy trying to make things and get everything I everything together. There's really a lot um, to do to do for even just a little craft show like we mm. were doing. And this was a true craft show. Like, I haven't been to one of these in forever. forever yeah. yeah, because it seems like, at least here, a lot of... Um, craft shows yeah are are they're at, they don't call they don't even call them craft fairs they call them bazaars mm. and it's a lot of um out here a lot of spouses end up selling like pampered chef and scentsy and uh i don't know doTERRA and all these like what, um what's the owl one origami or, origami, origami owl yeah these are all the uh, 31 31 is yeah the, the bags the bags but they're all like um it's kind of like mail order stuff you know it's like i don't know direct sales i think is what you what you would call yeah, it yeah um where they you know like you can go have a you can sign up to have a show at your house and they bring all the products from this company and you get to try them out and if all your friends buy enough, then you get a special gift. gift. <laughs> but anyway, so a lot of these bazaars, and it's very popular out here because it's something that, like, moms, it's, it's like, a stay-at-home mom job. It's, it's like, sanctioned and legal. Mm -hmm. It's approved. It's an approved business that you can have by the base. Right. 
and it's I mean it's easy you don't have to make anything it's just this it's a company that mm -hmm. and I don't mean easy like they don't have to work I'm sure they work hard but anyway besides you're the able point, to make your own schedule with it yeah beside the point so a lot of a lot of the things that end up bazaars that end up happening out here are you get a lot of those vendors mm -hmm. and um so this was a true craft fair everything was handmade and it was it was a good variety of like of mm -hmm. different things and yeah i think i thought it was really fun right yeah um, there were some really brilliant things there. There were some, yeah, people made some very beautiful things. And, um, yeah, the kid next to us, he, um, what he, was he, 16? He was like 16 years old. Yeah. And he, I mean, his mom was obviously helping him out, mm. but, um. All the things he made. Yeah. He did, uh, he like constructed them. So he, and he had these, like, he had found, a, or brought a bunch of these like old crates with him like um like the coke crates coke yeah like coke coke crates and different like old rustic crates style, yeah, yeah and he had like attached um handles legs and, and handles and very you know they were very like um found object kind of yeah rustic um Pieces of furniture, basically, like little dog beds or, um, like, rolling crates that you could store things in or just kind of decorative this he, and that. He so. was making everybody laugh because he goes, excuse me, Sarah, ma'am, do you have a cat or a, and or small dog? Yeah, he was selling it. He yeah, was he was, it. like, going but nowhere. But I think he did pretty well. Anyway, okay, so. I know he did at least $300 in sales. Really? Wow. Well, mm -hmm. That's, I'm sure he, I mean, it wasn't like he was selling them for nothing. They were. Right. They were pricey. I'm sure he did more than that. I'm sure he did much more. Mm -hmm. But, um... Because some of those items were sold before we even started. Yeah, yeah. But they were very cool. I mean, I can totally see why mm -hmm. he did so well. And there were a lot of people with very creative things. So, um, and then our table was kind of like the... Front and center table. Yeah, actually, we had the very first table you saw as you walked in, which was, I don't know how we ended up there, but we lucked out. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, I, I was selling spinning kits, like the one that, um, that Danielle got, so a spindle and some wool to, um, to get started. It's the same kind of stuff that I use in my class when I teach it, so it's, um, I, I honestly wasn't expecting to sell any of those. I didn't think it would be a very popular item, I, but I brought them just mm -hmm. in case, and... I sat there spinning with my spindle, so people people were interested, and then they'd ask what was going on, or we'd, you know, offer the information, and, and then, like, I ended up selling quite a few of those, so mm -hmm. it was very, that was very cool. I, I was happy to, have sold like, too, inspire yeah. people to learn to spin. I thought that was very cool, and... Two of them were um, vendors that were next to us, and they were like, I've been watching you all day spin. Um, I have to, you know, figure this out. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, we were uh, enabling the crafty minds. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. That's what happens. You end up selling to vendors sometimes as well. But, um, yeah, and I sold uh, necklaces. Like, this. I made sea glass necklaces, like the one I'm wearing. Um, they say, it says Okinawa on it. And it's a piece of sea glass that I've soldered. Um, so those were those one, were actually pretty popular. Yeah, the one woman at the end. How many did she end up buying? Yeah, one woman at the end. She bought like five. Yeah. So that was good. And mm -hmm. then um, I sold the ornaments like I showed you. And actually at the craft show, I only sold a couple. But I posted them on Facebook and I sold out of the ones that I had left, and then people were still interested, so now I'm taking orders. Wow. <laughs> so, um... That's really cool. Yeah, so now I'm taking orders, and I have, like, 13 orders currently. <laughs> Can you believe that? Let me know if you need any help. <laughs> yeah, so I actually had to go to, um... I actually had to go collect more sea glass because, I, I mean, I have a lot, but, you know, you want, like, certain size and shape for ornaments and things. So, mm -hmm. uh, we went to Sea Glass Beach today. 
Oh, very cool. Yeah, and it is... I don't know what the actual name of the beach is called, but... I have no clue. Um, everybody calls it Sea Glass Beach. And I literally came home with a bucket bucketfuls of glass. So, um... Are you going to have to break some of those up, or are you just going to let them be that large? You know, I'm not going to lie. I have a heart. Like, if I think it's cool, I'll just pick it up and bring it home. Okay. <laughs> so they're not all, like, intended as ornaments. Got it. They're just kind of cool pieces. Actually, some of my favorite pieces, and I don't know, like, how these oh, are formed, but are they're, really like, cool. they're like rocks of... Glass. They're like rocks of glass, yeah. And um, I don't know if it's, like... If there's some glass recycling plant that's dumping this into the ocean and this is where it happens to wash up. But there's a lot of these. And they're very cool. Um, so I have a few of those. But I generally the types of... Um, I was going to say, do you mind if I look at them? Oh yeah, go for it. I have, I have more too. I've got like quite oh, really? a few of them. Yeah, I mean there's all... Kind, believe it or not, this is some kind of green glass and who knows what else and um but generally the like this is more of the size and mm. it's, it's flat you know it's flatter this is part of a bottom of a bottle actually it looks like but the those are more these are more like ornament type pieces so anyway that's um oh yeah here's another one you know, actually, like, see how they have kind of metal embedded in them? Here's another yeah. kind of, like, one of those. This is, like, uh, it looks like it has um, cement or something. Yeah, like. so this, I bet um, these are coming from, like, casting, like, some kind of a casting place or... It's obviously glass that's been melted down and, like, the metal bits that are in it those might be like from um from the ladles or the crucibles that they mm. um that they cast out of well the Ryuk glass factory is yeah all the way to the north well there's two yeah more, yeah um, I'm, and this beach is up north and so it could be it could be from a glass factory or something i i'm sure that's what it is but it's very cool um so anyway, we had a blast. Emrys loved playing in the sand. Um, He's a see. sand guy. Yeah. Other than that, we've uh, we decorated our tree. Emrys did beautiful. surprisingly well. Yeah. I only put out the shatterproof <laughs> <laughs> ornaments, <laughs> but he helped me put them on the tree, and he hasn't really messed with them. You know, he we've left it up. He likes to turn the lights on and off. We have like one of those step. Oh gosh! Gotcha. It's a cord. It pl the cord plugs in to the um, light strand, but there's a there's like a little button that you can step on to turn them on and off. He likes to play with that, but <laughs> he's left the presents alone. We have presents under the tree. He's left those alone. He's left the tree alone. So it's been it's been that's, good. So that's far. very mature of him. <laughs> yeah, he's done well. I was I'm I mean, surprised. We were exper We were testing it out, but he's. And I know some adults that don't leave it alone. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience, right? Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I guess that's all really that I'm gonna talk about. It's been so long. <laughs> Those are the main main points. <laughs> so what about you? What have you been up to? Um, so we had like I said, the craft fair on the sixth. And then immediately after the the craft fair, I went over to the the Camp Courtney Christmas Festival, mm -hmm. um, where we had a, a a booth for work. Yeah. And um, but problem is I didn't actually get to that booth. Um, I I you said that. You no, know, I stayed with one other team member at the branch, and we worked on the ATM. Uh. So our ATM at the branch decided to go on vacation problem is he did not post notice that he was going on vacation i uh, guess i'm pers per uh, personifying an atm anyways um <laughs> <laughs> and um uh, so our atm was down um from that saturday the 6th um until friday this last friday um so two days ago and so naturally I have uh, people who are completely and utterly ticked off that 
you know, they can't use the ATM and um, the closest one is like five minutes away, um, even though there's one probably 50 feet away, but it, it's not ours. Um, it's somebody else's. So People get spoiled. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so I got to deal with that. And, um, I stayed at the branch for um, anywhere between 9 and 10 hours a day um, with the ATM, oh um, ATM techs. Um, and it was just very frustrating. Um, and then Friday, the... The people, the company that owns, or I can't say own the ATM techs, um, but the company that Contract contracts them, them. <laughs> yes. Thank you. That was very, like, hires. servitude of me. <laughs> well, anyways, um, the <laughs> hires the ATM techs the, and trains them. The feudal age. Um, ex- exactly, apparently. <laughs> apparently, this is Danielle embarrassment episode. Anyways. <laughs> Um, the, or apparently we're just making that, you know, the quarterly theme since I had one <laughs> last time too with the church underwear. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, but, uh, I want to say that the, the company contacted <laughs> Sorry, now I've got the giggles. The company contacted me. And basically, like, I don't know, they're like, I don't know what's going on. Could you possibly try to install the software on this ATM? I'm like, uh, sure, you know, like. (laughs) uh, Okay, even though I don't know how to do that. (laughs) Exactly. And so all I had was the instructions and Google. And I, like, I had to figure out, like, how to put in a 13 digit ip address in 12 digits and <laughs> hey more macgyver no- moments from danielle over here. and like how to uh what a a, a sub mask was in terms of computer lingo and i'm like what is wrong with you people why are you making me do this <laughs> why can't you figure this out on your own but the point of this whole story is the fact that I did get it up and running, and it is currently still running. Awesome. Yay. So, yeah, so... Fully capable. You fully deserve a with, raise after this the, week or whatever. The, com- what we call the command center, who is all um, the people who monitor our ATMs worldwide 24-7. Um I, when I called them up to, you know, initiate the startup sequ- a sequence, they're like, so we can call you now for any of the other ATM problems, right? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I, I was like, don't make me do that again. That was nerve wracking enough. Yeah. Thank you very much. And so, <laughs> and um, yeah, so if I had to stay in the ATM room, you know, like one more hour that day, I think I would have, like, ran out of the building screaming um, and, you know, changed my name and moved to Mexico. I don't know, you know, like, and because, like, I, you know, like, I was done. Like, I was toast (laughs) done. And uh, in the last, I was telling Allison before we started um, that in the last two or three weeks, uh, I have talked to... um, somebody that I work with, um, no, no matter who it is, so I had to work, do, deal with a work-related issue every single day for the last two or three weeks, and I'm done. Like, <laughs> even today, I still had to deal with another issue, and I'm like, please, I just want one day where I don't hear from you and my phone is shut off. Like, that's, that's what's going to happen, unfortunately. And, um, for my own personal well-being. But yeah, so, um, my, my boss had her baby on the first, so yay, congratulations! Um, she had a little girl, and, um, just adorable as she could possibly be. Um, and so we're, 
but at the same time that my boss had her baby, we had um, dignitaries visit the branch. Um, by dignitaries, I mean our uh, facilities branch manager, and um, so that person is the person who takes care of our building, um, and you know essentially gives us the money to fix things. And then uh, our uh, regional manager was there for a couple of days. So she felt it was necessary to come in during those days. Um, and she had just had a baby five days before that. And we were like, please, it's going to be okay. You know, like, I mean, she wanted her one-on-one -on -one with the, the regional manager and that sort of stuff. But we were, you know, it's okay. You know, dedication. <laughs> dedication. She's a diehard for sure. <clears throat> um, so yeah, there's that. And then last night we had our um, company Christmas festival, or not festival, co company Christmas party um, that I drug drug my husband to. And it's a good thing I drug my husband to it because he won in a raffle uh, a soda stream soda maker. And so I've been playing with that for the last, well, today. Show me your and, bottle. Oh, yeah, here. <laughs> this is this is the bottle that the the actual soda is made out of. I don't know. Can you see that? There we go. And so this is really hard plastic. Um, and so I was really surprised. There's no plug-in for this. Oh, really? Yeah, there's no plug-in for the, the. You just changed the cartridge? Yeah. Mm. Um, and the cartridge is like bigger than this bottle and it's supposed to be for 60 refills yeah and yeah i i think these are really cool a soda stream if you don't know it's it's you can like make your own carbonated beverages i really think i just like carbonated water really sometimes so i think that's what's i mean you can just you can just use tap water mm -hmm. and you can carbonate it yourself and i like I like the fizzy fizziness. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's just water. I'm not really like interested in the flavors as much, but you can also obviously add your own flavors right. and make it health. It's like you could make a healthy soda if you're a big mm. soda drinker or something and you didn't want to. Well, uh, for that one like um the the box uh, came with six little samples and each one of the sample well it's syrup syrup samples, right? Uh, each one of the samples is about an ounce and a half of syrup, and it's supposed to make one liter of soda. And this bottle is a liter. Yeah, Soda Stream sells like their own flavors that you can add the mm. syrups. So, what flavors did you get then? So we got um, there's no regular syrup. So it was diet cola, uh, diet uh, red grapefruit. Um, lemon lime root beer okay that one's regular is the root beer um and then energy like an energy drink um and i'm forgetting there's one more it came with six um but yeah so we or orange orange we the the first one we did was orange and we used the entire one and a half uh ounce um syrup packet um in this bottle and it for me it was too much flavor but my husband thought it tasted exactly like orange crush um and then this morning i used the um a half a packet of the diet grapefruit and i thought that tasted fine my husband thought it tasted horrible um and I'm like, well, you're not drinking it, are you? <laughs> uh, and, and then today, just now, um, before I came, um, I, I made it, and this has the lemon lime in it, and I only used a third of the package um, just to give it a little bit of flavor to it, and I think that's perfect. It's a third, third of the package. What's a third of the package? Of 1.5. 0.5. 0.5. Yeah. I'm not working right now. I'm not doing math. Uh, 0. 0.5 uh, <clears throat> ounces of syrup. So I have to keep that in mind for any future references. But I have noticed, I, I think there's some operator error going on here um, because the 
the soda loses its carbonation really quickly. Oh, really? Hmm. Like within five, ten minutes. So like I said, operator error. Interesting. Maybe it's just not as carbonated to begin with or something. And that could be too. But maybe I'm not holding down the button long enough. Hmm. Interesting. Because you're supposed to hold, like, I guess there's a battery in there somewhere that there's LED lights that mm -hmm. light up. There's... But I so there is electric or there's electric power of some sort. Of sort it's just battery powered, right? But I haven't figured out where that at battery actually goes. <laughs> well, didn't it come with a instruction book yeah. and everything like that? Yeah. But okay. Have I actually gone through the entire instruction book? No. You'll get there when you need to <laughs> when it stops working. Exactly. <laughs> or you have to change the cartridge or something. Exactly. Yeah. So um. So like the. The front portion of it, you just press down um, to get the car the carbonation level that you want. You can either do one, two, or three, and um, so I've been doing it until well, the first one we did it only until number two, and I was like, oh, that's not enough. So I last the last two of them I did until number three, and still not enough. So I'm like, there's got to be some sort of operator error going on here that I need to like. Possibly YouTube, <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Interesting. Anyway, <laughs> you. are you? Uh, do you have anything else going on, or nope. anything else for this week? No, that brings us up to current date. How about you? Do you have any bird calls? I don't right now. Okay, so I just have a real quick one. Okay. Um, I want to give a bird call out to um, Miss Joanna Springs of the Knit Knit Spin Farm podcast. Um, and she has like, um, well, she has a, a farm in Indiana and she has like all of these like really cool, follow her on Instagram because she has all of these really cool, um, uh, farming photos. And, um, once we get out of the military, I would love to have our own land and possibly have our own sheep, but, um, you know, like. I, I don't think my husband is behind that 110%, but that's okay. Uh, you know, I could deal with the sheep. <laughs> I'll come around. <laughs> Just show the sheep love. Anyways, um, <clears throat> and uh, so she's she is my hero that she's doing something that I, I want to do r right now, um, you know, rather than sitting in an office. <laughs> What are you going to do, right? And um, so, yeah, go check her out as Knit Spin Farm. Um, and both, uh, uh, she, I, I download her via iTunes, so maybe you can do that via, like, Downcast or something. Um, and then, um, I want to say the uh, Instagram. Follow her on Instagram. Very cool. Yeah. Did you get any mail? I totally did get mail. Um and it was a day late and dollar short. Um, uh oh. Yeah. I, I ordered myself um, uh, an Etsy card reader. And oh, you got it? I got it in the mail. I didn't bring it with me. I'm so sorry. Um, but it's it's just like the a regular square plug-in card reader. Um, like from PayPal or um, uh, Square. Uh, attach it to your phone and right. then you can run credit cards mm -hmm. like to sell things and exactly you ordered it for the craft fair right um because yeah. i knew my item uh, my items were going to be a little expensive so i'm like uh, my best bet is saying that i can accept card yeah um and you can just uh you know put put it on um sell on etsy it's an app on your on your phone and i haven't actually done a sale on it yet um but they allow you to do practice wipes and my practice wipes work um and so the i'm excited to try that out the etsy one's cool if you have a shop too because it automatically like takes um that item out of your inventory so mm -hmm. you don't like if you go to a craft fair with all of your etsy inventory or something you don't have to put your listings on vacation or inactivate them or something because they'll automatically come out of your inventory when you sell it. Mm -hmm. And you can use it, um, like, if somebody pays cash, you don't even have to, um, you don't have to use the card reader for the app to, like, take it out of your 
you can sell things like just in person period Mm -hmm. which is cool I um I actually looked into ordering one after you told me about it Mm -hmm. and they don't have any more they're all out so oh wow Um, so I'm gonna say it was it was free so they just sent it to me um for free so that's very cool I can't wait to see it Mm mm-hmm I'll, I'll, I have to bring it over. Nice. Um, but, yeah, and so I actually tested it out. I don't have my phone on me, but I have um, a life-proof case on my phone um, because I am danger-prone um, <laughs> 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 and will have tendency to drop phones in puddles or toilets or whatever. And um, so the on... I'm going to borrow your phone. For yeah. Me. So on the life-proof case on the very end of this has a, a, a plug um, to make it waterproof. So if, and then you have to have this like a little extension cord because you have to screw in your headphones. Huh. And I was really surprised because the, the Ed, when you have the Etsy card reader, um, it plugs into your headphone jack in order to read the card. Um, so I can actually plug the, the Etsy card reader into this extension and it will still work i was really surprised nice so but yeah there's that how about you what did you get for in the mail did you get anything in the mail um i did i we have been getting packages but they're all christmas related Related. so they're under our tree right now and i don't have anything to show you because i'm not going to open them yet (laughs) Um, I ordered soap to make some felted soap for this craft fair, and it never arrived, and it still hasn't arrived, so. The mail gets really slow around this time of year, so I'm hoping that's just, that's what it is. This, yeah, anyway, I never got my soap, so. Yeah, the card reader, um, I ordered November 4th, November 6th, something like that, and it, just got here, I think, on Thursday. Yeah. And I don't think it's... It's not like USPS. What happens is here, yeah, when, the, when the... When the... Um, when the packages get, like, to our actual post office, they can only put so many packages out at a time. And people here order a lot. So much. Because... It's just not available here, so they'll order it online, and then especially around Christmas, like, people just order all of their presents or get them sent from their families, so, I mean, it's crazy. Your mailbox is in Kadena, too, yeah? Yeah. So, like, the line to pick up packages normally gets anywhere between 50 and 75 people deep. Yeah, and they do, they have extended holiday hours, um, and they're not usually, like, open on Sundays, but they're open on... Sundays right now, and I think they're even open till like 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve or something. I mean, they're they're really like trying to <laughs> do the best they can. Mm-hmm. But if people don't come pick up their packages, then they get backed up, and there's like a crate out back where they're that they wait to unload until they right. can get enough space. space to bring more packages in. So that's that's what happens around this time of year. Um, anyway. So, and people like come in with, so we all have these little tiny little post office box Mm -hmm. and people come in when, and when you get a package, you get a a little slip in, in the box. Yeah. Um, and so people come in with like six, seven, nine of them and you're just like, what? Yeah. (laughs) And like. I just have one, sir. You yeah, know, like <laughs> I know. I was actually I, I did get my Christmas packages mailed out, and I um, we did a prize drawing a little while ago. I finally mailed that out a week or two ago, but and I got a note from it was um Susan Q Knits on our on our Ravelry group. She won it, and she sent me a note saying she got it. Hey, good, good, good. So it actually arrived quickly once it was sent from here, but let me tell you, I was dreading going to the post office. I'm not going to lie, because it's, like I said, this time of year is crazy. But anyway, it it didn't end up being that bad. I went at a slow time, so. Good, good, good. Yeah. 
So anyway, we are on an hour now, so okay, we better we should cut probably it wrap it up and say uh, say goodbye for now. And uh, we apologize; right. we won't we won't wait this long again for the next episode. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> I will work on it. Yes, yes. Um, so there should be two episodes coming out here soon, yep. and um, that one say that one should be posted now. Yes, I think it just uploaded tonight right <laughs> so, so we I, had internet issues right so anyway um we will see you guys again soon promise <laughs> thank you have a great week bye bye